you ever get the chance to visit Sri Lanka, one city you must visit is Gaul. It's ancient, beautiful, and its mix of food and culture is more diverse than anywhere else on the island. Just outside the old Dutch fort, there's a daily ritual that's been going on for centuries. Very interesting way to be putting a, uh, putting a net in. But the work that goes into it and the meticulous way that all the uh, nets are folded. This tug of war with the sea is a game of hit and miss. Some days the fishermen win and there's plenty for all. Other days, well, it's a heap of hard work for not much at all. Our fishing net stretches for hundreds of metres. You'd think the fish wouldn't have a hope. Seabirds promise a good catch. But today is one of the bad days. Look at the beach, look how many people there are. I'm sure everyone's gonna want a little bit of this. Not much at all. That was an incredible experience. I've got blisters on my hands, just dried my shirt out. And that net was really not that full, was it? But inside, there were some cuttlefish. And that sort of inspired me to cook a dish with squid. Now, cuttlefish and calamari are very different, but you can use this curry for both of them. So we've got these lovely squid, calamari. Cleaning them is quite simple. You just pull the head out, and pretty much everything inside comes out. Then take the wing and just cut around it. Now, here in Sri Lanka, they don't actually remove the skin or the wing, but I think it looks a lot nicer when you've got a good contrast, the white colour of the fish. And then inside is the little cartilage. That's pretty much all you have to do. And then just set them aside. So what I'm gonna do is keep the head and basically just the tentacles. So just, just below the eyes and then just push it. And inside is the ball, which is its beak or its mouth. Now, the simple part of just portioning them. So chop all these guys up. Hard work's done. The rest of the curry is really simple. So my chatty comes in use again. Just pour all my squid in there. Now, it's a fish dish. It's going to be a little bit sour. So, and it's black. So there's two ingredients that sort of signify that, and that is black pepper. Gorica, which is that wonderful souring agent that gives an earthy flavour but also a, an acid tone which you need in this dish to balance it. Mine's going in whole because I don't want that sour flavour to go all the way through, I just want little hints of it through there. A little bit of turmeric. This is not a yellow curry but the turmeric will add flavour rather than you know anything else. Some cumin powder, unroasted. Chilli powder, plenty. some roasted curry powder. Now, this is the little secret. This is a meat curry powder that's going into this. Uluhau or fenugreek seeds and a little bit of coriander. It's not necessary to have a lot, just a little bit. So mix it up really well. Doing this basically means that you're getting all those flavours in there, inside it, around it and through it. No frying in this at all. Curry leaves, got some nice ones. A nice, decent sized onion. I've got a few green chilies here, and I found a few red chilies as well, so I'm just gonna throw one in there. You're not really gonna see the color contrast in there, but you certainly will feel the heat, which is what we're after anyway. Some garlic, lots of garlic. I really like garlic on the, in this one. Salt. Got one more stir. It's nice when you smell something and you get that mouth-watering sort of sensation at the back of your mouth, that sourness comes through. So just adding all this to it. Second extract of coconut. A 
covered, probably take about eight to 10 minutes from beginning to end. As it came up to the boil, I've just stirred it a few times. The sauce has thickened, it looks really nice. Now it's ready to serve and I'm just gonna serve it on a big wide plate because this is the dish that I want as the star. The red chilli stayed red, the green chilli stayed green. That's all because none of it was cooked for too long. And I guess the, the next thing is just the flavour. Lovely rings, nice little bounce to them. It's got a great bite to it. It's not chewy though, it's crunchy. It means it's cooked just right. It's got a heat to it too. It'll bring a few beads of sweat on your head. But the combination of flavours is really nice. I'm tasting everything. But the great part is at the end, that subtle cuttlefish or squid flavour is still winning through. And that's so important in cooking a dish that you do remember the hero ingredient. Your main ingredient, the thing that you've paid all that money for, needs to come through at the end. And I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Sri Lanka is an island packed with gems and spices that sits in the centre of the world. Traders from Europe, the Middle East, Africa and Asia have been coming here since the beginning of time. The port of preference was usually Gaul. Gaul Fort was like an ancient United Nations. Today I'm catching up with an old friend who's moved to Sri Lanka from the UK. Juliet Coombe is a journo who came here on assignment, fell in love, converted to Islam and married a local. OK, come up, Peter, I want to show you something. This is a bit special. Juliet takes walking tours around the fort. OK, the interesting thing about the gardens in the fort is that they are really almost like the archaeology or the history of the people who lived mm. here. The yeah. British bought roses, um, you, you find things for the Dutch, the tulips, and you'll find a whole range of plants here. And there's always food in the gardens, pomegranates, curry leaves. Has curry, to be, every gar it? Our garden it has, has curry. If you ever have fresh curry leaves, my husband practically left England on the spot. No, <laughs> he said to my father, where's my, your curry leaf I plant? My, my, dad father, the same thing. my father said, what are you talking about? Why We don't have a curry leaf plant <laughs> in Pimlico. Okay, case, well, I'll buy you one. Yeah. This is Law Court Square, and the amazing thing about this is that only... Oh, my goodness, no, like, <laughs> a bit of live action. The um... amazing thing about this is it has some of the oldest trees in the fort. The fort itself is about 408 years old. This tree is really special. If you come over here, it's really special. You've got Hindu, Tamil, actual shrine, and you also have a little Buddha from 1812. We know if you come oh, here... Oh, this one here. ..right on the left-hand side, it's actually become part of the tree, and we also see Muslims coming here. So people like Katragama come together. When you see that within the tree itself, it's almost like an umbrella for the different yeah. religions. The nice thing is it means that everyone is equal. Over the centuries, Gaul Fort has had so many influences that finding an appropriate recipe to represent the culture was quite a challenge. I'm cooking a Mediterranean-influenced Gaul Fort-style dish. It's got all kinds of flavours in it, and I'm using a wonderful piece of mackerel that I found at the markets today. It's just beautiful. It's very oily, has great flavour, but needs to be eaten fresh. If it's not fresh, what happens is the oils come out of it and it starts to sort of sour the flavour. Very expensive, this fish, compared to others found at the market, but there's a reason for that. It is a wonderfully delectable fish with great flavours and big flakes. Now, I'm doing like a beetroot salad. I've pre-prepared the beetroot because it takes about an hour to add flavour, to enhance the flavour. I'm using sugar, some cumin, a little bit of vinegar and some Sri Lankan cinnamon. And I'll just let it cool in the water. We'll prepare that later. The whole idea of this dish, with lots of the things that I do, preparations first. So, got all these lovely dishes, pomegranate, easy to clean, just remove the skin, take out all the seeds. The fish is wonderful, but I'm going to crust it as well. Now, the basil leaves are huge, a little bit of mint, some parsley rolling it inside the leaf of basil and then chiffonading it. Chiffonading is like a fine shred. And the last bit I'm putting into it is fresh rocket. 
very large, so I'm just tearing the leaves off and I'm discarding the centre stalk. And then just, again, chiffonading them nice and fine and mixing them all together. Beautiful, fresh, aromatic collection of herbs. Now, breadfruit chips are quite easy. You can do this with cassava or pretty much any kind of root vegetable. Sweet potatoes are nice as well. And then slice them as thin as you possibly can. I'm going to put them into a pot of water to get rid of the, the stickiness, that little gum that comes out of it, but also to keep them nice and white. Now, I'm going to make the Mediterranean sort of feel to this, and that's going to be this wonderful buffalo curd. Still has a lovely jelly wobble to it. And that's going to be mixed with salt and pepper. Again, think colour here. This is the white colour, which is going to contrast so well with the beetroot. And that's really it, because I've got lots of flavours. It's made a lovely sauce, and you need to get a really smooth and rich cream. Goat's curd is available in Australia and around the world, probably a bit more than this buffalo curd. Now, the dressing, I'm going to use garlic, a little bit of salt, just crushed. Brings it all together. Some sugar, some black pepper, some vinegar. A little bit of olive oil into this. And we're also going to add some toasted cumin seeds because it's a really nice flavour and also texture. And once they're ready, just pour them into your, into your salad dressing. The next thing is to prepare the fish. Seasoned lightly, salt, pepper, a little bit of chilli, because we are in Sri Lanka. Can't not have chilli, can we? The pan's hot enough, it's sizzling, but it's not smoking. The only thing I have to do is make my breadfruit chips. Now, my oil's been on for a while. So now I'm going to make my um, beetroot salad. These banana chilies, green chilli, some onion, a little bit of raw garlic, some of these herbs, my beetroot. And I'm going to add roasted cumin, powder this time, and some salt and pepper. Mix that around. Everything's sort of coming together well at the same time. Chips are just about ready. I'm going to put them into one of my all-purpose chatties. All the moisture has come out of the breadfruit now, so they've gone nice and brown and crisp. You can hear them. They just rattle in the pan. I also need the oil for that other ingredient to make this a Sri Lankan dish, which is papada. Put my papada in. So I'm just going to make my salt, chilli and pepper mix to go with these. It's good to get this just after they've come out of the fryer, so there's still a little bit of oil on them. That way, your mix will stick. Now, I talked about using the herbs as a crust, so I'm adding the herb crust to it now, which means the fish gets one final turn with the herbs on top of it to add some flavour, some lime juice, and that'll just deglaze the pan bring all the flavours together and make a bit of a herb sauce to go with it. As the fish sits here, the juices from the fish will come out and that really is all the sauce you need because I've got a great salad as well. So, I'm now ready to plate up, adding my Sri Lankan ingredient to my salad. My yoghurt sauce now comes into play. I'm just going to make a nice splodge of my beetroot goes into that, giving it texture, colour, flavour. Now I'm going to dress it. That way, none of the colours will run. And my fish. And then my pomegranate, which will just make people talk. 
So the finishing touch will be to serve it with a bowl of these chips, which people can just dip into their yogurt or possibly just eat with the beer. Very nice. I've been wandering around the streets of Gaul here looking for street food. You really need to look hard here. That tiny little blue and white and corrugated iron hut is selling all kinds of stuff, paratha and a cup of tea and I'm not sure what else. I'm going to go have a look and see what I can get for my evening tea. Egg pitra roti and uh, one tea, milk tea. The skill here I still haven't been able to master, but the flavour I just chase all the time. A very simple roti folded into a triangle, chilli paste, an egg, and just fold it together. It's just juicy. Just love this food. It tastes so good. When you drink the tea with it, it heats up in your mouth and the sugar cools it down, so it's really nice. In Sri Lanka, this snack food is known as short eats. The variety is incredible, and cooking them, well, there are a few tricks. There's one short eat that I really wanted to do because my faithful assistant here who's travelled the whole trip with me, Bubby or Shamil, has uh, always been caught sneaking off to have one of these. And it's called a what? What are we cooking today? Uh, it's an uh, egg roll. An egg roll. Sounds simple, and it is, but it tastes so good. OK, Bobby, so let's make the batter first. Yeah. Uh, can you remember what goes in it? Yes. First flour. Yeah. And uh, four eggs. Yeah. And a milk. The fish is just steamed with salt and pepper. I've also got some boiled potatoes, and I'm just going to chop those roughly. Cook them through with the skin on. It's important because there's no water that has actually gone into the potato and it still holds that nice dry waxiness. You can see that it's a lovely potato. Tasty, waxy. And then some fish, which I'll just break up. It's still quite hot, actually. I'll just finish cooking it. How's that batter going, mister? Looks good. What I've done with this is made a lovely combination of the, the tuna and the potato. The measurements would be the same, so 50-50, potato and fish. So into this mixture, I'm adding salt and pepper, seasoning it up now. So that's ready to go. What's the next step, Bobby? We'll first do the temper thing. Get all the flavours into yeah. it now. So temperadu, or to temper things, don't be scared about using a lot of oil. It's really nice, because you're putting a fair bit of ingredients in there. So just dicing up, finely dicing up some onion, and some garlic, and we'll put that in. Really getting a lot of colour into that as well. Do you need curry leaves now? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so now we're just going to combine them. Put it into there. What I'm going to do while he's doing that is heat this pan up and start getting ready for my pancakes. I hope the mixture's right. I'm sure it is. While we're making the pancakes, we're going to get ready for the next and final stage prior to cooking, and that is the crumbing of it. So if you can make me an egg wash, so it's two eggs, some water whisked together, Okay, it looks good. So the way I'd normally batter something would be to put it into flour, then an egg wash, and then crumbs. But here in Gaul Fort, who am I to argue, the egg wash is made with flour. So let's see how it goes. He knows. OK, Bubby's just going to cut these uh, eggs in half for me. I've peeled them already. Just cut them in half lengthways so that you've got half an egg per person. Pancakes on a bench, and then just a little bit of the mixture, place it into the centre. Next is place the egg on top. And then the idea is just to fold it over. Now, I'm assuming, seeing as I've never made these before, that a little bit of egg wash would help a lot to hold it together. 
and keeping that fold on the top. And let's crumb them now, Bobby. Yeah. So just make sure when you're doing it that you get all the corners nicely covered and you make a very, very nice parcel. Lots of oil for this and cook it with the fold down. And really, because everything in there is cooked, now what you want to do is just get the crumbs nice and golden brown and it'll be ready to eat. Should we try one? Mm -hmm. The test, the taste test. Look at that. The egg through it, all the flavours through it. Bubby, have you ever made one of these before? No, it, this is first time. And I want you to try it. You can be the judge because you are the man who always yeah, goes yeah. out for these. Mm. Good. On day. On day. On day. Fort offers many things, but something you're about to see now is truly unbelievable. Woo! Amazing. And he's alive. I'm supposed to have a go as well, but there's no bloody way. 